Hi everybody. Thought I'd jump on a minute early. How you doing? Happy TGIF. <laughs> we made it through another week. <laughs> <clears throat> so, <gasps> Becky. Hi Becky. Hi Sharon. Thanks for joining me. I'm, let me make sure I'm on Facebook. Let's see here. Refresh. There I am. Let's see. Say hi if you're on. Hi, Rose. Oh, my friend Becky says, looking good. Thank you. <laughs> hi, Linda Wood from Texas. All right, it is beautiful and cool up here. I think B.A. Pratt is Bonnie Pratt. Is that you, Bonnie? Hi, Rachel. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Mom. I, uh, yes, and hello, Debbie from Kentucky. So I am on my deck. Do you guys remember when I p planted this deck? Y'all encouraged me. I am not in Idaho. I am, this is my back deck of my house. We, uh, in, in Redmond. Hold on, let me just send. Oh, goodness gracious, what did I do? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry guys, hang on, I just disappeared. There, good Lord. Sorry, I was trying to <laughs> get my uh, camera situated and I just turned it off. <laughs> Really, Andy and Reagan should take the technology away from me. It's not good. <laughs> so, if you're wondering what's behind me. This tomato plant, it's an air, golden heirloom tomatoes, has taken over our whole deck. I, we didn't buy a big enough cage for it. If I would have known that it was going to like the deck so much, I would have bought a bigger cage. And I think I told you guys, my dog, hi Jeanette, my dog has figured out that um, there's nummies on the plant, and so he'll go. This deck doesn't have access to the downstairs. It just is a standalone deck. And he, <laughs> hi Becky, happy Friday. And he figured out that there's nummies on the plant, and so he started asking to come out here and sit out here, and I thought that was super weird. But he's a weird dog, so I was like, all right, he just wants to go sit on the deck and sun himself. We call him Ferdinand the Bull because he just has no, uh, you know, ability to be aggressive. He just wants to go lay in the field with the f and sniff the flowers. So I thought he wanted to come out here and sniff the flowers. No, the little jerk was out here eating my tomatoes off of my tomato plant. No more nummies for Rogue. Hi, Carla. <laughs> I was like, whatever, buddy. So if you're just joining me today... Let me just be a little bit more formal about this. My name is Darlene. I'm with Featherweight Doctor. We're located in Redmond, Washington. Um, Friday night is my favorite show of the week. I do three shows during the week. Monday is a more formal um, troubleshooting type scenario. I have my doctor's coat on and I'm addressing issues. <laughs> Rose says her dogs do that too. No nummies for the puppies on the deck. Um, and then Tuesday is my, uh, for the next couple months anyway, is my quilt as you go so along. So that's more um, cultivated and, and educational. This is Friday night, ladies. So we are sipping wine on the back deck, working on a fun project with my little mini mouse. So Bridget says, beautiful deck, thank you. We love this house, specifically for exactly where I'm sitting right now. Um, it's, it, we can't see any neighbors cause we back up to what is called a green belt here in Seattle, which is like a wash in Arizona. Um, so there's nothing but big tall timbers behind us. Oh, I see the neighbor's cat. We call him the serial killer because he takes out the baby bunnies. I bet he's stalking one right now. Mm. Anyway, so Friday is pretty much just my time to sit down and chat with my girls and sip some wine and sew on a project. So if you're looking for something real beefy with details and education, this is probably not your show. Um, 
<laughs> we're just gonna have some wine and have some fun. Some of you want to know what I'm sipping. So I am sipping a Sato St. Michel, which is a Northwest winery. Um, and this is from Indian Wells. It's a Chardonnay from Indian Wells Vineyard. So that is what I'm, it's a 2017. I like anything from Indian Wells Vineyard. All right, we have some comments here. Hi, Judy from Massachusetts. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Lisa, Lisa Meadows from Arizona. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, my cone holder. Rose likes my cone holder. Um, our white schnauzer at, oh, ate an entire jalapeno plant. What? Peppers, stems, and roots. I bet that was a bit of a mess <laughs> to clean up. Yikes. Uh, Ellie says we have a dog that eats figs right off of our tree. Naughty. I have to fence in my garden to keep her from eating all my plants. Your deck is so pretty. Thanks, guys. So do you remember when I planted this? So we have the tomato, and then we have mint. The mint has gotten huge. Um, parsley, which we've actually had to cut back twice now because it is like overflowing over the plant. This is my basil. My basil gets used probably more often than anything else. Hi, Jackie from Illinois. Oh, she never got sick, Lisa? The dog never got sick, sick after eating a jalapeno plant? That shocks me. That's crazy. And then this is my pathetic looking, um, oh, what's that? Cilantro. It, I thought I killed it because I left, it didn't get planted right away and I thought it got root rot and then it started, it started coming back. But now all it does is flower. I don't know what I did to it. I, I really don't have um, much of a green thumb. Although with COVID and tons of time on my hands, you wouldn't know that from looking around my deck. And then these, this a big plant here and a big plant over here that are citronella plants. So it keeps the bug population down on the deck, which is kind of fun because we have our share, share of mosquitoes here in the Pacific Northwest. So that's not fun. Okay, Darlene, what are you working on tonight? I'm so glad someone asked. This is, you guys ready? It's my true colors quilt. I have the top all together. Look. Isn't that pretty? So I still oh, javelinas. Do you guys know what a javelina is? I lived in Arizona for a year before I saw one. They're wild pigs. And they're not, they're kind of aggressive, especially if they have little ones around, so you don't want to tangle with a javelina. And if you guys, I found this out because I took an interpretive walk in the garden in Tucson when I was there one time. So you know how those prickly pear plants have like the little paddles that stick off the plant? And then every once in a while you'll see one shaped in the shape of a heart. It's because a javelina, which is a wild pig, has come through and bitten into the paddle. A <laughs> big mean pig, Lisa said. Bitten into the paddle. Because they have no sensory, um, they have no nerve endings or anything in their mouth, so they can eat spiny stuff. They have no idea. Hi, Christine. And so if you see a, a prickly pear paddle that looks like a heart on the end, it's because a javelina has come by and munched the fruit off of it. And then it grew in looking like a heart. Isn't that fun? I learned that on an interpretive hike at Star Pass in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, everybody loves it. Thanks, guys. I will tell you the funniest story, though, about the first time I saw a javelina. It was just after a monsoon. We were leaving our home um, in Apache Junction, and I was taking the kids to school, and we had had a monsoon the night before. Monsoons are kind of scary if you're not, you know, familiar with them. You don't mess with flash flood warnings or, or um... oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Christine on Instagram is like, you're making me drool. She loves my mini. She's such a good machine. You never know, Christine. We're going to start painting soon. You never know. But anyway, so I was taking the kids to school after a night of, of storming and monsooning in Arizona. And I saw this bl big black pig running down the road. And I actually looked at it. And I'm like, oh, someone's pet pig is loose. And my daughter from the back seat's like... Mom, that's not a pet pig. That's a, a javelina. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't. I'm a Pacific Northwest girl. We don't have javelinas here. Hi, Lisa from Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, so I just totally embarrassed myself because I didn't even know when a javelina was right in front of me what a javelina was. <laughs> so, Jackie is Jackie from Facebook said, nice colors. I love that quilt. You guys, did you see what I posted earlier this week about that Journey to Nebula thing? So, I signed up for the block of the month starting in January of 2021, which is Tula Pink's new... Um, block a uh, new project that's coming out and it's being hosted by uh, is it Jaybird Jaybird quilts they created it so um, I signed up through one of the online retailers and with thought I was all set and I only signed up because it says no Y seams I do not do Y seams so I was all set and then Jaybird Quilts, who someone there is a marketing genius, decided to put out some free content in the weeks leading up to when um, Nova, uh, Nebula, sorry, um, Tula Nebula, Nebula starts. And I, and what they're doing, which is genius, is there's two different rulers that Jaybird Quilts makes, the Super Side Kicker and the Hex and more or something like that, but you kind of, you don't need them. You can do templates with the Nebula quilt next year without it. But of course the tool, the right tool makes any job easier. That's what my husband always says. Um, my friend just introduced me to Tula Pink today. She's amazing. Oh, Karen from New Hampshire. Welcome to the club. This is True Colors. This is her newest line. Okay. So anyway, I, um, so this Journey to Nebula program is Jaybird Quilts is putting on this Free, free education every two weeks from now until when Nebula starts. And you, it's genius because she said, <laughs> Becky's like, I'm in. <laughs> we're in, sugar, we're in. Um, but, she, but you can purchase the patterns in advance and the rulers in advance and then do all the education. So that way when Nebula comes out, you're already, you know, like totally up to speed. Genius. Gene, yes. So I signed up. It's free to sign up. And then I ordered the rulers, which are not free. And I ordered the first pattern, which is coming up here, I think mid-September is when they actually start on the journey to Nebula. <clears throat> Hi, Bryce. Uh, and it's, the first one's called Seaside, I think. And so anyway, I take all of my money, open my wallet and take all of my money because I can't help myself. It's bad. All of her fabrics, <laughs> mom's, Nancy says, I'm in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know who's the worst influence, my mother-in-law or to me or me to her because we're both kind of Tula nuts. And so we're doing, we're going to do the journey to Nebula together. If I learn anything, I'll go ahead and put it out so you guys can learn from my mistakes. Uh, my mo mom wants to know, Pauline wants to know, is it a wild boar? No, a wild boar is not the same thing as a javelina. Um, I think it's two totally different animals. Actually, I was really surprised that javelinas have really complex family groups. So they travel as a pack, but with their family and they only are real aggressive if they have young, um, if they have young javelinas with them. But it's still, they are very dangerous animals because they can charge and again, they don't have any kind of nerve endings in their mouth, so they'll bite. Hello, oh conservative. So, I have gotten a number of phone calls this week and I feel really um, I feel really blessed to be part of this community and to have you guys as part of my my tribe I think I've talked about this before that um, during all of this I think it's really easy to feel kind of siloed and alone and I think that's one of the reasons why um, these have been so well received and and why I definitely enjoy them uh, talking to everybody and so if you're just kind of lurking and you're hanging out watching the feed and stuff just say something so that I know you're there and that way when you call me on the phone someday and you're like hey it's Debbie from Kentucky I'm like I don't know who you are because I see you on my feed so uh, yeah it's it's just kind of fun um, did you guys see the picture that I posted I am supposed to be sewing I, I promise I'll start sewing and stop talking in a minute but um, did you see that picture that I posted of that sweet lady? My my new 83 year year young friend named Marion. She called me this week. <laughs> and hi Mary from Sumner. 
Hi, Lynn. Is she watching too? Um, <clears throat> anyway, I met this gal. She called me because she told me that she purchased her featherweight when she graduated from college at 19 years old, and she's now 83. So do the math on that. 63 years old, the machine is. Uh, and she was in a, she said it's been put away for a few years, but she pulled it back out because, um, of mask making you know how the modern machines are having trouble going through all of the different layers of fabric with the masks depending on what pattern you're using and um anyway hi missy from redmond anyway in cindy from liberty texas hello uh anyway so she, we we chatted she was in haste and shoved the bobbin casing in the bobbin assembly and it wasn't quite in and so when she took a stitch it went winging out and she goes no it just sounds terrible and sure enough, she let me listen to it over the phone. It did sound terrible. So I had her, we, we masked up, and I went and met her at a local shop here in Woodenville. <sighs> oh, Bryce says, Marion's story just touched my heart. Thank you for sharing. So I have to tell you guys the cutest part, though, about the whole exchange. She was a spitfire, first of all. She just was bubbly and energetic and and was so happy that I was there to help her with her machine. Hi Pam from Minnesota. Oh, she says she's also doing Journey to Nebula. Can't get enough Tula. We we should be friends, Pam. And Annie, oh, and Judy and Annie. Annie's her machine. Hi guys. Oh, we have Tennessee, Kingsport, Tennessee. Iowa, Carolyn from Iowa. Gosh, you guys, that's thanks for saying hi. Um, anyway, so we're there. It turns out, girls, there's nothing wrong with her machine. There was nothing wrong with her machine. She just, um, I don't know what noise was I was hearing through the phone, but anyway, it stitched fine. Hi, Sydney. And it worked out fine. And anyway, we're, but I have to tell you, when we're on the phone with her, she goes to hang up the phone, and instead of saying bye, she says, toodaloo. You guys, toodaloo. I just about died. I, I'm like, who says that anymore? I'm, I seriously feel like signing off all of my shows now, toodaloo, because it made me smile. Marion was such a sweetheart. And it was funny, because I, I asked her if um, she named her machine, and she looked at me like I had two heads, and then I thought, oh, you're the, you're the one that the machine would get named after. <laughs> it would be machine named Marion. <laughs> but anyway, that little machine hummed along. There was nothing wrong with it. It was a total false alarm. I told her she did have the original incandescent light bulb in it, and I told her she needed to get that fixed because she was going to burn herself. She said, okay, next time that it is misbehaving, I will get a light bulb. So, anyway, well, uh, what I'm doing now, you guys help me pick out this pattern from my friend Roxanne Carter for my True Colors quilt. So this, let me see here, I'll show you here on the camera. <clears throat> so it's called Rainforest, and several of you asked, and I direct you, you to Roxanne's Etsy, um, Etsy page to purchase it. So I have the center part done, and now I'm just working on these pieced borders out here. So that is what I am literally working on tonight. I will say that I broke my own rule. Do you guys do this? So with um, borders... I never cut borders until my quilt center is done because a lot of times my measurements are slightly off. But I, because it's Roxanne and I totally trust her pattern writing, I totally wrote my, or I totally cut my borders tonight. So I might be sorry I did that. Oh, conservative says Marion's story of her featherweight owning it for so many years is fantastic. How many people have their machines that still work for that long? I know, I know. Honestly, she's not the only one that I've met, um, but it's very few and far between that the original owner still has the machine uh, versus, you know, like some of the ladies that I have through the shop, it's their grandmother's machine. So it's been in the family, but they're not the original owner. This is the original owner. So I think that is so special. Um, Debbie from Kentucky says, I'm a good girl. I just got my new light bulb. Thank you. From you. And put it in and grease the motor. Yay. Good job. Um, another cute little uh, thing. Did you guys see that Eloise thing that I put in the case, that I posted, that little clipping? It was someone had put it in one of the cases and I had, the machine didn't 
stay with the case and so I've ha I have some cases set aside that are in good condition for people wanting to replace stinky cases and I was going through another case looking to ship one out this week and I found that Eloise thing I thought that was the cutest thing it uh it was you know Elo it must have been like a um like a write-in column for Eloise. I, I, this was must have been a little bit before my time, but some someone wrote in and, and said that they um, use a towel underneath their sewing machine. So that way when the machine is vibrating, it doesn't travel across the table. And I thought, that is such a good reminder. But anyway, so I did that this week. And then I also had another machine. There was like so many machines in the service shop today. Um, people are just trying to get things up and running. And I think, with the possibility of another shut-in. Um, I think people are just kind of trying to get their ducks in a row in case we're all stuck inside for an undefined amount of time. Um, <clears throat> for safety, of course. But uh, anyway, so I had another machine in and it was uh, one of my favorite shops around here, Gathering Fabric in Woodenville, Washington. The owner's name is Susan love her she is the nicest lady has always treated me so well and so she got a featherweight given to her oh Christine says I do the towel thing too don't want to scratch my dinette yes it does also protect your table um, but anyway she got a featherweight so I went through it for her this week and I noticed when I went into that case that someone had they're, they're like they had willed the machine to someone in the case like it was a sticker like someone put a post-it note um as i used to joke around with with my own parents uh, on a on the featherweight and it said when i go home and i don't think she mean meant to her house if you know what i mean this goes to carrie ann or whatever the na lady's name was so i asked when i returned the machine to susan this week i asked her asked her if she saw the sticker and she goes i know she said it was the lady's original owner's great granddaughter who had it and she just wasn't using it and knew that Susan might know someone that would want to use it because she just felt bad that it just sat there in her case and Susan's like I don't have a featherweight I will totally use it so anyway I thought that was kind of fun that uh that Susan uh got a machine like that that she actually like knew the original owner it's crazy Minnie doesn't sound I haven't used Minnie in a little bit. She sounds a little unhappy. That's not good. Maybe I need to actually take care of my own machine. What is the saying about the cobblers? Children have holes in their shoes. <laughs> Hi, Kathy from Illinois. <laughs> the featherweight doctor. <laughs> Her featherweights need grease in their motors. <laughs> Judy says, my case needs help. I'd like to keep it. Thoughts, thought about decoupage. Any other thoughts? Mostly the corners. So the way of cleaning up some of your cases, I, I'm not, this is not my area of particular exper expertise. The cases are not my area of expertise. But um, you can use, black, first of all, you want to give it a sponge bath. Um, Judy, like soap and water, bleach, maybe even bleach if there's mold and really clean like the whole inside and outside really well. And then I um, have been known to use Sharpie to, to darken the corners where, um, where the fabric has rubbed off of the corners. And then the other thing you can do is black shoe polish and a horsehair brush and buff it up with that. Um, I had um, Missy, Missy from Redmond's machine was in this week. Um, her name is Ellie Barr. The machine's name was Ellie Barr. Um, and I noticed that Missy had put a dryer sheet in the bottom of her box underneath Ellie Bar. Oh, her case smelled so good when I opened it up. So I have not personally tried the dryer sheet thing, but because my machines don't live in boxes at my house, but that worked really well. I've also, Judy, seen people strip all of the fabric off of them. And uh, they have... <clears throat> oh, there's a plane going by. It's sorry, guys. It might get a little loud. Um, and she has stripped all of the fabric off of it, and then uh, she's painted them. Like she took a sander, a hand sander, and got all the glue and everything off, and then painted them. 
thought that kind of seemed like a good idea too. <coughs> So these are some strip um, sets that I made, <clears throat> and I'm now putting the strip, the strip sets of three together in a row as part of the inner border, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Bonnie, hi Bonnie Pelton, we talked today. She said, I use dryer sheets in my three cases. Good, and Judy says, thank you, wonderful. Some of the cases are salvageable, and some of them are not. I have had several, there's a very distinct odor with the ones that are not salvageable and they are, um, they just hurt my eyes and I'm really sensitive as a person in general to smells. And so if it's hurting my eyes, then I can't, I can't, I just can't. Uh, oh, what am I doing here, Darlene? Let's focus for a second. So I have to use the seam ripper. Using this seam ripper at the sip and sew would be bad. So we're going on another camping trip. Yay, so excited. We are going um, up to the sound, so up to the salt water uh, in Deception Pass this week. So just for a few days. The smell of salt water just makes me happy, so we are going to, um, let's see here, two, <clears throat> four, six, eight, okay, and then I need one more, so nine. The fabric on this, um, on this quilt is really shreddy, not just the, um, the background fabric that I used, which is like a woven, it almost looks like a linen, but um, it's the Tula fabric's really shreddy. So I've had a lot of um, thread things and I, I don't like, cause I'm, I'm a, a long armor also, I don't like threads on the top of the quilt. So I spent probably a solid 45 minutes picking my threads off of the, uh, the quilt. From the seams you got to be careful not to tug on the ones from the seams really like this little this little treatment I think it's a really easy way to make your quilt a little bigger and kind of um, make the borders and the um, the rest of the quilt kind of make sense Bryce says I put the descendant packs in my feet yes descendant I don't know what that is are you talking about the silica gel things? Because that's another really good way if you live in a high moisture part of the country and you get those silica gel packets in the in the mail and stuff, that the ones that say do not eat. What they do is they literally remove moisture from the air so you can put them in your featherweight cases and it helps, you know, cut down on the humidity. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, okay, yes, those are the silica gel things, yeah. Totally not my idea. I saw that on another, another, <laughs> on my friend uh, Alicia's Featherweight 38 site. Totally saw it on her page. Hi, Melanie. Do you have your moose buddy with you? That's her puppy, you guys. He's so cute. 
He's huge. I think she told me he was a black Weimarimer. He's just a big smooshy face. She said her buddy Moose is there with her. Or Monty. Monty's is a moose. Oh, a blue Weimarimer, not a black. He's very dark colored. can't hear me through the window. <laughs> My mom the lover of the little Bichons says, give me a small cuddly dog anytime. Mom, there's nothing better than a big cuddly dog. I'm just saying. If you like little cuddly dogs, then bigger is better. Monty Goose. <laughs> Monday on my Ask the Doctor, um, we are going to talk about motors. I've had a number of people asking me about motors being um, slow and what kinds of things they could do to, to see if the, their machines have more speed to them. So we're going to talk about that on Monday on our um, on the Ask the Doctor. So four o'clock Pacific Standard Time here on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And Missy Fisher, my friend in Redmond, says, Golden Retriever, Miss Gracie, cute. I think Retrievers are the sweetest, but they shed so bad. And my Rogi, my Black Lab, is shedding like a beast right now because Lab shed twice a year. And, um, and then just drop small amounts of hair the rest of the time. And he's, oh, it's, we're in his molt. So, you know, I've been brushing him and having my daughter help me brush him and has been helping, but my poor little automated robot vacuum cleaner has been working overtime. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I call my vacuum cleaner Rosie after the Jetsons housekeeper. So I had another rescue mission today. I rescued a 1935 featherweight. Um, 
she's not quite a school bell because she doesn't have the chrome bobbin winder on the front but it's the it's the generation right before so it has a black school bell on it and it's missing some major parts like the gears underneath and the bobbin assembly but I think I can bring her back to life like I did Bessie one three four five six seven eight nine that is the plan anyway nine and then two ten units <laughs> Debbie said if you own a cuddle it doesn't matter the breed true I was able to get a photo oh good good Melanie so Melanie messaged me earlier oh there's a big dog debate going on on the Facebook feed right now Sch I Linda Wood says schnauzers are the best <laughs> You guys are adorable. I, let's just agree that dogs are kind of amazing. All dogs, amazing. Melanie had a treadle and she couldn't figure, We could, I was gonna help her try and figure out how to get the leather belt in it, but she, it's, my treadle is in a different part of my house and it has a bunch of home deck st stuff on it, so I didn't have it, time to unpack it yet but it sounds like Miss Melanie was able to figure out how to get the leather strap corded. That's awesome. So two, four, six, eight, Yes, Christine says dogs give unconditional love, uh, unconditional and endless love. It's true. I'm sure you guys see my shop dog rogue posts on my on my page. Since my daughter is generally in charge of the uh, social media posts, and Rogue is her best friend, that's why he makes such a regular appearance on my feed. So what other projects have you guys been working on other than quilts? You guys been doing any bags or <clears throat> more masks? I've done, I kicked out another dozen masks this week because I actually needed to go through and do a bunch of laundry and washing of my own personal masks. And so while they were washing, I kicked out four or five more. And Ray actually sat down, my daughter sat down with me this week and made about seven for her and her friends. I love that pattern that we were talking about a few weeks ago, that creative grid pattern. Melanie says, right on, I have a mini, mini doxy and a water, American water spaniel too. That's right, I saw a picture of your three loves on the couch on Facebook the other night. Ooh, goodness gracious. Oh good, she, Mel, Melanie says she got all of her sewing machines in for service. Perfect. We have to take care of these little machines so they'll take care of us. Who would have thought in the year 2020 that the sewists would be considered essential workers during a pandemic? I think that's pretty amazing. Margaret from Facebook says, my granddaughter's name is Ray. Isn't that fun? So my Ray is actually short for Reagan. Sorry about that. Oh, there I am. I got a phone call. Sorry, I don't have my 
phone silence. Um, anyway, she announced at 10 that we could refer to her as Ray, not Reagan. We're like, yes, ma'am. Our girl spells her name R-E-A, though. <laughs> oh, I missed a comment. Sorry, guys. Someone was talking about their pup. Shoot. Can't get it back. How do I dig in here? Judy said hand sewing on a grandmother's flower garden. That's what she's been working on. It's a challenge. 20... <laughs> Uh-oh. 2030 project. Had Annie apart today. Oh, I because you were doing her, her service. That's right. And then Lisa said, have you ever did a dem on the attachment? Oh, a demo on the attachment. Which attachment, though? Which attachment are you talking about, my friend? Hand sewing. I haven't picked up my EPP since I was in the car, although it is going to come on my camping trip this next week. And my plan is um, because we're going camping with some other families, and so my daughter will have entertainment. It, I think I'm going to try to make a big dent in getting the sample done for our quilt as you go sew along so everybody can kind of see what it looks like when it's finished. That is my hope, anyway. Oh, on the ruffler I haven't done a demo on the ruffler I'm because I'm not a um, traditional sewist seamstress type I don't um, use the other the tr the regular feet that have come with the machine because they're not necessarily designated for quilting um, but I should pull it out and figure it out we can all figure it out together that would be super embarrassing because I'm gonna be like not knowing what I'm doing I almost missed you working on scissor, scissor holders. Oh, you're working on scissor holders. That's fun. Suzanne's like, I almost missed you. I try to put a reminder out because I know you guys get busy. Heck, I get busy. I was talking to a friend. Jeanette, who was on here earlier, I don't know if she's still on here, but um, she's like, aren't you supposed to be getting ready for your live? And I'm like, oh, I'm already set up, but it's a good thing she reminded me because sometimes I'm flying in here. Um, Bryce said, I just finished a sew together bag by so mented, so demented on my little, oh, post a picture. I want to see it. <clears throat> I'm so inspired, you guys, when I'm on Instagram and I see people with all those pretty bags and the pretty zippers, and I'm like, I just can't do it. They always come out looking like a kindergartner made them if I try and make a bag. I was, um, I'm still kind of knee deep in that boxy tote bag, that one for the featherweight that's made by the Quilts Illustrated gal. And it's, the pattern is really complicated and I was having a lot of trouble. So I actually signed up to take some classes at a local shop, Quilting Mayhem. And that before COVID, you know, I was going in for getting assistance from one of their bag maker teachers and we still were having trouble with the pattern, but then COVID hit and I didn't get to finish it. So it's still sitting there unfinished. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! Jeanette's still here. <laughs> oh, good. She said, I'm here. I accidentally cleaned the entire, accidentally cleaned the entire kitchen while you've been chatting. So now I can sew all night, I guess. You're supposed to be sitting with your foot up, lady. Jeanette, you have an injury. Suzanne says, making 48 of this for the scissor holders. Oh, for my fellow sewing guild for a gift. Oh, making them on my featherweight. Also made a feather or a cover for my machine. That's so fun. Good job, you guys. Woo. Everybody's had an inspirational week. My phone was just 
ringing off of the hook constantly this week. I love talking to other people about their machines though, so that's okay. My, my phone is ringing off of the hook. I talked to a nice gal in um, Brentwood, Tennessee today, and she's part of a featherweight club, six, seven, eight, hold on, I can't, <laughs> nine, ten, okay, I, got, I can't talk and count at the same time. Anyway, she, uh, and she wants to have me, because they're not, you know, they're social distancing and stuff. But she, I think I'm going to get on a Zoom call with them and do a little speaking thing, which I'm totally excited about. I miss everybody. And I can talk about these machines at nauseum. I mean, I can't stop. <laughs> My stomach's growling. Do you hear that? Dinner's around the corner. Um, what, what are you guys all making for dinner? I'm making a carne asada and rice and beans. Sounds so good. Suzanne's having salmon tonight. Yum. Oh, hi, Sharon. Sharon and I met this morning. She's looking at a machine online. And I think, did you and your husband decide you were going to go pick it up? <laughs> Linda Wood said, I drive my husband crazy when I talk about featherweights. <laughs> Jambalaya. Nice, Melanie. That sounds good. Uh, my mom had leftovers. Of course, I have leftovers too for lunch usually. We cheated and have Burger King Whoppers. Hello, that is cheating. Sounds delicious though. I probably drive my husband crazy when I talk about featherweights too, which is why I have you guys. Because <laughs> I know you like it when I talk about featherweights. And he's just like... Mm. Kirkland Quilter joined. Is that like Kirkland, Washington Kirkland? Like where I am? <laughs> Technically, I'm in Redmond, but. Hi, Kathy Swan. Cleveland. It is a beautiful day here. Oh, she said, yes, we're going tomorrow. And if all checks out, we'll be looking for a name for it. Yay! Thunderstorms. Yikes. Becky says, every Friday is Catfish Friday from a barbecue place in town. So we go to it. Hubby does catfish. I do barbecue. <laughs> well, isn't catfish kind of... Um, What's the word? Grizzly? Is that? No, that's not. Has a lot of grizzle on it. I'd be all about the barbecue too. Oh, Kathy, I live in Redmond by Stratton. Wait, I live in Redmond by Stratton Wood. Oh, here, 
Jacqueline Quilter. Hi. No, I literally live right across the street from the Redmond or the Rose Hill Junior High. Right up the hill from Strattonwood. That is crazy. My mom, who's in outside of Dallas, says, nice here if you like bloody hot. <laughs> Kathy says she moved to Kirkland. We moved from Kirkland, closer to Lake Washington High School, to this neighborhood in October. I love it here. It's like beautiful and green. Okay, I gotta count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I lived in Phoenix for four years, so clearly I like bloody hot. Becky says catfish is very flaky, but I've never liked catfish. I'm not sure I'd like catfish either, but I do like fish. Cornmeal batter on catfish and fried. Mm. Do you guys use your air fryer or like real deep fried? Cornmeal. <laughs> I think I would have gone with the barbecue also, Becky. Oh, time flies when you're having fun. All right, I think I got my four borders done. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right, 102, Christine, and Texas. Cheese and crackers, that's hot. Rose, did, yes, I got your email about the thread holder. I'm not ignoring you. I promise I've just been absolutely swamped this week, my sweet. Um, I think I'm going to grab one of the spool, an older spool pin cover off of a parts machine and paint that versus a new one, Rose. Um, I have the paint. I have the spool holder. I just needed a lot of time in my day to do that. I haven't forgot about you, I promise. All right, girls, I am going to get cut off here because I'm just about at an hour and that's all Instagram will give me. So I'm going to sign off. Uh, if you like this video and you like hanging out with me, go ahead and like the video and share it to your friends. We are um, on three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday. Oh, okay. I have visitors on the deck all of a sudden. Made me nervous. Uh, we are on all three platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Monday is our troubleshooting group. Um, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer about your Singer Featherweight, then go ahead and email into our shop, info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor.com. And um, your question will probably make an appearance on one of our lives. Uh, on Wednesday, we are doing a quilt as you go so along. It's free, and I'm encouraging you to use your stash. And it's not too late. We're only two weeks in of a 16-week program. So go ahead and check out my past Wednesday videos so you can get caught up we're doing a um thanks becky she's like thanks for another good time have a great weekend bryce thanks for joining me uh and then so that's wednesdays join me on wednesdays for that and then uh fridays is my sip and so monday guys monday i'm gonna be in the campsite that is my plan anyway and we are going to be talking about motor work on the featherweight so join me four o'clock pacific standard time again right back here on instagram youtube and facebook have a great weekend everybody thanks for joining me it just makes my heart happy that everybody joins me and and says hi and i just don't feel so <laughs> toodaloo <laughs> You guys are cracking me up. All right, take care, guys. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.